Welcome to Weiss on Film. On each episode of Weiss on Film, we're going to take an everyday approach to movie reviews. Why don't you go over and get yourself some refreshments? There you go. And then we're going to head over to the screening room. All right. You got everything? Are we ready? Let's get into the screening room and get ready to see what we have in store this time on Weiss on Film. When a talented computer engineer finds out that an executive at his company has been stealing his work, he tries to hack into the system. And that's where the trouble and adventure begins. This time on Weiss on Film. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome to Weiss on Film, the everyday movie show where we give you honest reviews. We've got a great one in store, but before we head into the screening room, if you're enjoying Weiss on Film, would you please do us a favor? Would you give us a positive rating and review on your favorite podcast provider that you happen to be listening to us on? And also share us with your friends. Get the word out about Weiss on Film. If you'd like to contact us, you can email us at WeissOnFilm, W-Y-C-E, WeissOnFilm, at PurplePitStudios.com. And for more episodes of Weiss on Film, just look for us on your favorite podcast provider. We're all over the place on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and so many more. Jovan, uh, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, just to name a few. And for more episodes, you can also visit the parent website, purplepitstudios.com. And hey, while you're there, why don't you check out more episodes of this podcast and many more. All right, so let's get into it, shall we? So let's get ready. Let's get into the screening room. Uh, When a talented computer engineer by the name of Kevin Flynn finds out that Ed Dillinger, an executive at his company, has been stealing his work. He is determined to try and stop him by hacking into the system. However, Flynn is transported into the digital world where he has to face off against Dillinger's computerized likenesses, Sark, an imposing master control program. Aided by Tron and Yori, Flynn becomes a freedom fighter for the oppressed programs of the grid. We're talking about the original 1982 sci-fi action movie called Tron. We're going to let you have a listen to the original trailer, and we're going to talk about it right after this. The NCOM 511 computer. Center of the most calculating intelligence on Earth. Within it, there exists an unknown civilization where man has never been. A startling new world where time and distance defy the laws of logic. I still do not understand why you want to break into the system. Because, man, somewhere in one of these memories is the evidence. Kevin Flynn, computer genius, searching for answers inside the system. Hey, 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 it's the big master control program everybody's been talking about. Stop, I'm warning you. I'm going to have to put you on the game, Brendan. Propelled into the digital world of the computer itself. Oh, man, this isn't happening. It only thinks it's happening. Hey, there's been a mistake. i got to see the guy in charge. You will. Who's that guy? That's Tron. Trapped inside an electronic arena where love and 
escape. Do not compute. The journey begins across an electronic sea on cycles made of light. So there you have it. There is the trailer for Tron, the original version, going back to 1982. Now, this stars Jeff Bridges, David Warner, Cindy Morgan, and Bruce Boxletner uh, were the main characters of this film. Uh, This was made by Disney Studios, and again, back in 1982. Uh, It's a testament to technology and historic filmmaking. The film looks just as beautiful today uh, as well as it was a technical marvel for its era. Uh, At the box office, it garnered $33 million back and it was released July 9th, 1982. It had a budget of $17 million. And again, it was just a, a testament at the time to the technology And uh, really pushed the limits at the time. But it still holds up today. I had remembered seeing this back when it came out in the theaters. And I also revisited it recently before we decided to do this podcast. And it's it's an excellent movie. It really is. It's a great sci-fi drama, action drama. Uh, The film, unfortunately, was disqualified for receiving any Academy Award nomination for special effects because the Academy felt that at the time using computer generated effects was cheating. Well, look, look how the worm has turned nowadays, right? My friends, I mean, nowadays almost everything is CGI and (laughs) everything like that. Um, There's some goofs in the film that you can spot in the opening light cycle battle just before Sark kills the other program. The light cycles instantly change places for Sark's blue cycle on the left and the yellow one on the right to vice versa, but they instantly go back again. So anyway, there's there's some great great quotes from this movie. Um, Alan Bradley about getting digitized, uh, getting a digitizing laser said, great, can it send me to Hawaii? Kind of a homage to Star Trek, the transporter. Um, You know, it's amazing how well this movie has held up. Uh, People still are enjoying this movie today. It's garnering great reviews and it has throughout. And it's, it's a, it's kind of a puzzling film. The language is located with, is is loaded uh, in the film with some computer jargon, but we've come so far now with computers that we kind of know basically what, what they're talking about in the film. Um, it's got, again, the talented Jeff Bridges, who has been in everything. Of course, the son of Lloyd Bridges and brother of Bo Bridges. And Cindy Morgan, who went on to be, be in a lot of films as well. Uh, David Warner, great uh, stage and screen actor as well. Uh, Justin Bostwick, uh, who has been in a lot of things. Uh, Ted White who went on to be in a lot of things as well. You know, a lot of a lot of actors kind of had some limited roles in this movie, but also went on to other things as well. Um, this movie also garnered a sequel called Tron Legacy. Uh, so you might want to check that out as well. But if you have never seen Tron, I strongly urge you to check this film out. It's It's got a lot of great scenes in it. Basically, he uh, works at a computer. He's a computer geek. And, uh, again, this is set when it came out back in 1982. It was set in present times back then. I mean, the Atari was the big thing. Remember the Atari 2600, Commodore 64, things of that nature. Apple had just launched computers. And it wasn't a, in an era or a time where everyone had a home computer. That's the the nice thing about this film. It's It kind of took a look at the future and... It was making assumptions on what could be, and I don't think anyone that worked on this film or produced this film or even you know thought about this film and wrote it thought how big computers could become in our lives and how they have become part of our everyday life. Almost every interaction we have with anything nowadays is run from some sort of computer or microprocessor, and this film had vision enough back then uh, to say, hey, this is going to be an important part 
of world society. And lo and behold, it has come true. So definitely, uh, when it comes to Tron... Yep, we're going to give it a thumbs up. The original Tron, we are definitely giving a thumbs up and uh, have a chance to check it out because it is definitely worth your time. And it also would be worth probably checking out the sequel to this with Jeff Bridges and some of the cast of characters from the original that came out back in 2016 called Tron Legacy. So if you have a chance, check out Tron. It's available on most streaming platforms now or on Apple iTunes. That's all the time we have for on this episode of Weiss on Film. We took a little bit of a nostalgic step back on this episode. We hope you enjoyed it. And again, if you're enjoying the podcast Weiss on Film, would you please do us a favor? Leave us a positive rating and review. It's because of positive ratings and sharing the podcast with people like you out there that we garner more listeners and we produce more episodes for you. So thank you so much for being a listener to Weiss on Film. And until next time, I'm going to get back in. I'm going to clean up the screening room. And I look forward to getting together with you on the next episode of Weiss on Film. I'll be sure to save you a little popcorn. You take care and enjoy the rest of your day.